In today's video, we're back with another NHL GM report card. And today, we're taking a look at the trade, signings, and drafting of Brad Tree Living of the Calgary Flames. We'll get into his work coming up next. So welcome back here to Top Shelf Hockey and welcome back to the GM Report Card Series. And as I mentioned today, we're taking a look at the Calgary Flames GM, Brad Tree Living, over the last season and current offseason and what he's made for trades, signings, and how they made out at the 2019 NHL Draft. And after reviewing that, we're going to grade his work and see how we compare it to many of his peers around the NHL. Now keep in mind, most of the data I'm pulling for today's video comes from either capforonly.com or hockeydb.com. Some great resources for hockey information, lots of history there in case you want to know where any of this information is coming from. Now, first of all, let's jump in and take a look at the trading record of Bradtree Living over the last season. Now, right around the beginning of last year, we saw a trade between the Calgary Flames and the Montreal Canadiens, where the Flames traded defenseman Brett Kulak over to Montreal in exchange for Renat Valiev and Matt Tiermina. Now, Brett Kulak and the Flames had gone to an arbitration hearing on a new contract. Obviously, sometimes that does fracture the relationship. Not long after that was resolved and he was given a one-year contract, he was traded to Montreal. But Kulak certainly was a decent depth defenseman in Calgary. And uh, now he has been the same thing in Montreal. It was a nice pickup by the Habs. Uh, so overall, I'm going to say that Montreal won that trade because they get themselves an NHL player uh, who's been useful for them, whereas the acquisitions made by the Flames there uh, really overall have not panned out to be NHL material at this point. Now, later on into November, there was another minor trade as well between the Flames and the Leafs trading uh, Morgan Klimchuk to Toronto in exchange for Andrew Nilsson. Then later on into February, near the NHL trade deadline, the Calgary Flames had acquired defenseman Oscar Fantenberg from the Los Angeles Kings in exchange for a 2020 conditional fourth round pick. Now, the condition was that the fourth round pick became a third round pick in 2020 if the Flames reached the conference final and Fantenberg played in at least 50% of those games. In that case, the condition was not met, so therefore it remains a fourth round pick given up here to LA. We did see a fairly substantial trade between the Flames and provincial rival the Edmonton Oilers where they swapped kind of what we'd call a bad contract swap here with the Calgary Flames sending uh, forward James Neal to the Oilers in exchange for Milan Lucic as well as a 2020 conditional third round pick. This transferred if James Neal scores at least 21 goals or more and Milan Lucic scores 10 or less then in that case the pick will be added. If that condition does not work out then they don't get the extra pick so Basically, they're kind of assuming that James Neal is going to score more goals than, than Milan Lucic here. And if he hits 20 and uh, Lucic fails to hit at least 10, then obviously the pick will transfer. So we will see either way. The pick is kind of irrelevant for the most part here. We have Lucic exchange for Neal with a little bit of Lucic salary being retained here. Um, so overall, I like this trade way more for Edmonton. I'm not really sure why Calgary made this trade. Now, I understand why they wanted to trade James Neal. And I do understand why they went out and acquired Milan Lucic. Lucic. I understand that based on their playoff series against the Avalanche that they really just felt that they were needing some more size, some more grit. And Lucic can certainly provide that. Um, but at the same time, when they signed James Neal, they signed him to be a top six scoring winger, which he's been a majority of his career. I mean, we've seen James Neal hit 40 goals or at least 20 to 30 goals on, you know, pretty much his entire career, except for last year where things really tanked. But I think a lot of that had to do with his deployment and how he was being used with the Flames organization. So I guess we will see how this trade works out. But I do think the more likely Likelihood here that James Neal will succeed way more in Edmonton, playing with some top offensive guys, more so than we will see Lucic in Calgary. But of course, Lucic in Calgary at the same time here, uh, you know, he's going to be playing a different kind of role. He'll play lower in the lineup. Uh, he will provide some grit. He'll provide some toughness. He'll provide some size, maybe a nut front presence on a power play. He will provide an ingredient that he was missing. I just think longer term that the Oilers will get more out of Neal and more benefit here than what the Flames did. Now, as we saw last year, the Flames had a terrific regular season and went into the playoffs and lost in the opening round against the Avalanche and made that season a, a you know a fairly substantial disappointment. And now they're kind of trying to find that missing ingredient, what they need to get over the hump going into next year. But overall, I do think that that trade will benefit the Oilers more. So if you look at the trading history here, Brad Tree Living, they're not horrible trades by any means, but I think more often than not, we're going to say that the team he was trading with is going to be uh, benefiting more from the deals than Calgary did.
Now let's take a look at his record of signing players over that time frame as well. Now even though it was technically right before last season started, he did sign newly acquired defenseman Noah Hannafin, who they acquired from Carolina last summer uh, on August the 30th to a six-year contract of $4.95 million, $29.7 million total contract over that time frame. Uh, for the most part, I think that's a pretty decent contract over term. Uh, it's going to prove to be better. For right now, it does look like a little bit much. Uh, Hannafin, you know, has a, a lot of potential still to improve and get better. But overall, not too bad of a contract here for the Flames in Hannafin. Now, of course, later on into the season, we didn't really see any more signings from the Flames until we get around to the springtime where we saw some entry-level contracts signed. None of those entry-level contracts are really at a point where they'll make an impact on the team right now but uh, throughout the rest of the year there really wasn't any more additional signings during the season that takes us to the current off season here where uh, Brad Tree Living did have some work to do he did sign defenseman Brandon Davidson to a one-year contract 700k wouldn't be shocked to see Davidson end up playing in the minors uh, but at the same time he might prove to be useful especially with the injury to Valimaki they are going to be short on the blue line here and of course we also saw him buy out Michael Stone uh, who's no longer a part of the Flames as well uh, uh, so obviously uh, they did the stone buyout before the Valimaki injury and I guess we'll see long term if that works out I mean stone wasn't really uh, working out in Calgary so I understand the buyout I, I do think that was a, a good choice um, but obviously the injury came afterwards which was just bad timing more than anything now of course we also saw them sign goaltender Cam Talbot to a one-year contract at 2.75 they opted not to re-sign veteran goaltender Mike Smith uh, of course I did re-sign David Riddick here that you see a two-year deal at 2.75 so they're going to be running with Riddick and Talbot uh, I'm not sure that I have a ton of confidence in Cam Talbot uh, but overall it is a fairly lowest contract it's so only one-year deal uh, Riddick hopefully can be the starter and play majority of the big games for the Flames throughout the season uh, but I'm obviously last year goaltending was a bit of a question mark at times for the Flames and I do think it's going to be remaining that way going into the coming season uh, so overall I mean based on what else was out there on the market I guess the Talbot signing was certainly you know a better option than many of the other uh, unrestricted free agent veteran netminders that are out there but I guess we'll see how that pays off but at least it's a low risk deal otherwise they did come to terms with Sam Bennett on a two-year deal as well at two and a half billion I have no problem with that uh, hopefully we'll see a little bit more offense come out of Sam Bennett maybe he can improve his game and elevate himself into getting a bigger role I mean he's kind of turned into more of a role player who can provide a little bit of grit and stuff and really coming out of junior we did not expect Sam Bennett to be that type of NHL player so I guess we will see but overall for the most part these signings are are fairly safe deals fairly low risk and we'll see how they make out with these guys moving forward. Now let's take a look at the 2019 NHL Draft here for the Calgary Flames. The Calgary Flames used their first round selection, number 26 overall, and left winger from the Moncton Wildcats, Jacob Peltier. I think that's a pretty good selection based on who else was available here at the time. I think Pelche will prove to be a pretty solid prospect moving forward. Now, they did not have a second round pick this year. So that takes us to their next pick at third round, number 88 overall, where they selected a Russian forward, Ilya Nikolev. And then in round four, they selected another left winger uh, from Sweden, Lucas Fuke. And then in round five, they took Josh Nodler, who's a center iceman from the USHL, number 150 overall. And then in round number seven, they took themselves a goaltender from the Everett Silvertips, Dustin Wolf. So another Western Hockey League goaltender getting selected to add to their goalie prospect pool here. So overall, the Calgary Flames didn't have a second round pick. Last year, they didn't have picks in rounds one, two, and three. It would be nice to see the Flames kind of hold on to more of their selections and build more of that prospect pool here moving forward to see how they can build that up. Because right now, their prospect pool is okay, but as many of their guys are beginning to graduate to the NHL level, it would be nice to see more picks and more prospects in the cupboard for the future. Now, obviously, the Calgary Flames still have some big question marks over them at this point in the offseason, which is difficult to grade, but the fact that they don't have a contract yet in place for forward Matthew Kachak is certainly a little bit concerning. They're not the only team in this predicament. There's many teams around the NHL who have some big-time RFAs that remain unsigned. So, of course, you know, it's not a case where uh, they're kind of alone in this situation, but we've seen the camp from Matthew Kachak make comments publicly that they put forward what they thought was a pretty solid offer uh, for a Kachak contract back as early as June, and yet there's still no agreement even though we're near the end of August. 
Obviously, we don't know the exact figures that Kachuk's looking for, but it's fair to say it's probably somewhere around 8 or $9 million. Uh, the Calgary Flames might have to make some additional moves here, like trading a forward. It's rumored to likely be Michael Froelich if they can find a deal for him. Uh, there was talk about trading a defenseman, but after the Valimaki injury, that likely isn't going to be the case now. So the Calgary Flames obviously had a pretty successful year last year, but they don't want to tinker with things too much. I do like the fact that uh, Brad Tree Living didn't really panic here after a first round exit to the Avalanche. They're just trying to tinker a little bit with their lineup. They moved a forward in James Neal, who they signed to a big time contract last offseason. Didn't work out. They were able to find a swap there and even though I think the fact that he will fit better in Edmonton than he did in Calgary, and I think the Oilers will benefit more longer term, uh, I do see how Lucic might be able to work and help out the Calgary Flames situation there as well. Uh, so I guess we'll see about that. And of course, we have some different goaltending tandems as well. The blue line is going to look a little bit different. Uh, but overall here, I guess we can say Bradshaw Living really hasn't tinkered too much. He hasn't made a ton of change, which is good because they do have a really solid base, a really solid foundation with this team. So overall, I'm going to give him a grade of a B. I don't think there's any reason to grade him any lower, but at the same time, I don't think there's really much reason to grade him any higher. I do, th I do think some of the trades that he made, even though they weren't terrible trades, I think the team he was trading with will benefit more longer term. So I'd like to see him maybe win some more trades in the future here and maybe restock the prospect pool a little bit better to hang on to some of those picks as well because uh, they have been a little bit short on picks over the last couple of years but the flames are certainly in win now mode the big question marks going into the season though certainly around the blue line and whether or not this goaltending tandem is going to be any better than last year i think they have lots of firepower up front the forward group is pretty solid it's just we'll see how the back end works out and if it can be improved from last year which will determine if they can have any additional playoff success compared to last year so let me know what you think of brad tree living's work let me know what you think of how you would grade him as well and we'll continue the conversation down in the comment section if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.